pray to you, O Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, do you know him? You have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, I have been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the, in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the work themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that my Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will give it to you. I will do it. Holy Gospel. Amen. Yes, we are beginning once again with that infamous Sunday school memory trick. But you can't have the steeple without the people. And even more important than that, you can't be the people without Christ. The Gospel of John has some complex statements from Jesus for us to spiritually chew on this Sunday. These are those I am statements, in essence going back to the first commandments. They are God's laying out of the promises and the boundaries we are all to take heed to, become prayerfully obedient to. Those beautiful timeless words are the mortar to the church we gather in today. I am the way, the truth, and the life. In that same breath, we could almost hear a descant chorus from Hebrews 13, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. But as Peter points out to us in yet another wonderful insight from his first letter, we are spiritual stones, those living stones. We are living stones to be built upon that cornerstone, Christ to build God's spiritual house. As we know, the stones hurled by those in the crowd and sensed by Stephen's brutal honesty, the vocal mirror to their failings, revealed our great need for some tuck pointing. Well, as Jack Nicholson's character in A Few Good Men says, you want the truth? You can't handle the truth. What he doesn't say but we, as disciples of Jesus, may perhaps want to say or add on as a trailing thought, you never have, and I wonder if you ever will. Our faith calls us, however, to rebuke this frustration with, as I've said before, never say never. Is this being too much of an idealist? Are these words seemingly coming from that flower power era of innocence we have so completely lost in some senses today? I would hope not. But it all depends on your spiritual tuck pointing. How well or healthy is your spiritual house? Is your heart engaged in the mission of our work together for a greater goal? 
purpose of the gospel, or is it someplace else? These are tough questions. But what makes a solid foundation to any structure is a solid commitment, a commitment of craftsmanship, service, and in our case, faith. Those gracious bricks are being formed by your witness and resolve in the world on your journey, your journey right now, today. Your journey begins by being built on that cornerstone Christ. Each and every one of us has something wonderful to share. This is the good news that sadly, <coughs> like those soon to stone Stephen, we at some point or another have tried to stifle or control. Closing ourselves off to the truth of the gospel is what begins to chisel away at those walls, robbing us from the life God intends for us to all find, to find our way to. Talk about getting your house in order. We just finished unpacking the last few boxes and hung a few pictures. There was a giant picture frame of my graduation pictures from the School of the Art Institute from 1992. 25 years ago, I can't believe that. <laughs> the pictures and the tickets and the papers were starting to fade and started to fall down and the tape kind of got gross and all that, so. And I'm like, okay. I thought about it for a moment, prayed about it, and decided to take those 25-year-old pictures out of the frame and put up this new big giant picture of Jesus. You guys saw that last night. The Jesus the Good Shepherd. Uh, my best friend, Yurik, got that for me before I moved here. And I was looking for, thinking about a picture frame for him. I, when I hung the picture in the kitchen, everything came together and made sense. It was almost as if Jesus looked straight at me and gave my spiritual house an actual, and actual house, peace, resolve, and mission. Philip in today's gospel represents our human nature in saying to Jesus, show us the Father. Face it, though, we like to be in control, do we not? We want to go from A to Z without doing the spiritual, tuck-pointing, internal work needed within us to be shaped by the way, the truth, and the life of the gospel. There is often some confusion and unpopularity with the meaning of Stephen, the first Christian martyr of the church in today's lesson. It goes back to that one-string banjo, I like to call it, we want to, at times, close our ears and our hearts off, too. This would simply be, you got to live it to give it, faith that is. Our response is one that is naturally formed by realizing God's grace active in your lives. He is that mortar. We need, you know, we need him for, to hold the bricks together, to hold our faith together. What Philip basically reflected here is a view of glory or responding around faith for the purpose of the self. We do this as well, with feeling the need to be works righteous. Doing things not really out of faith naturally, but doing them to feel good or feel accomplished. This is not building a firm enough foundation in your heart, however, to see real justice or reform society with the word. The truth of the gospel, its way and life, bear and reveal the gifts of God through our acceptance of reaping God's grace as that new nature, that new nature within us. Christ, the new Adam, initiated this new life with his cross and resurrection for our behalf. <laughs> Stephen told it like it was. You could say he was, that he was the first purveyor of the honest planet. Anyone here remember that skit from Saturday Night Live? It was a while ago, I think it was from the 80s, but you know, they, they, they just said it like it was and there's mushroom clouds in the background. It, it, it didn't work out too well. <laughs> His faith compelled him to speak the uncomfortable truth to the crowd. This truth was that they did kill off those they didn't like to hear from, their prophets. They turned away from spiritually working upon themselves to hear God's message to lead them. Instead, they created a political legal system to control and redirect 
their way over and above God's. The Pharisees in the Sanhedrin, as we well know, did this very successfully. We're just as guilty of it today. Politics have no place in the gospel. Faith, believing in Christ Jesus, and living spiritually in his footsteps is the way, truth, and the life of the gospel, period. That's why we need to keep our spiritual house in sync, in order. There are many ways to do it, but that is for God to reveal to you where you are on your journey, on your individual faith formation path. Over the centuries, Christians have been searching for ways to shape their lives to Christ. Some people have slapped a, the label of religion upon these pursuits, which I firmly believe oversimplifies and robs the spiritual aspect of what it means to have a living faith. The Franciscans come to mind as a great example of living faith. A young monk in Assisi, Italy, in the 14th century and named Francis and a nun named Claire envisioned a way of life that was centered in living to give to others through service, basically through service. This is what they heard from the gospel, living together in community that built the walls of their order by and through prayer, where their influence is still being felt today. Religious orders in general are a scarce phenomenon in the 21st century. People assume that it's an exclusive practice just for those who are seeking to be, have formal roles, such as priests, pastors, nuns, and deaconesses in the church, as well as that it belongs to, solely to the Roman Catholic faith alone. Quite the contrary, things have changed quite a bit. There are still orders out there but people who belong to them are from all different backgrounds, Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox, and the like, living in their own homes and with their own families and coming together on occasion with, through retreats and fellowship gatherings. A few years back, I originally joined a Franciscan order, which sadly closed when the gentleman running it, the order basically decided to retire. The order I would come to join and am active in today is the Order of the Most Holy Theotokos. This order includes people from many Christian faiths. There's Methodists, there's Episcopalians, there's Baptists, and there's everybody is involved. And it's basically for those who appreciate Mary, the mother of our Lord. Yes, let us not forget that today is Mother's Day, and we do appreciate not only our parents, but Mary, the bearer of Jesus, into our world. This is just something of, from my faith formation that has creatively been incorporated into who I am as a disciple, active disciple of Jesus. We were all given life, and most importantly, new life, through Christ to blossom and bear witness. And we bear witness uniquely in how he leads us. That's important. Could we say it is by a spiritual ethic or discipline that we are to find our way? Yes, this is a truth for us individually and as a church family. I say this for hopefully in the next few weeks, we will all be contributing to re-envisioning our statement of mission and purpose as this hopeful band of witnesses for the gospel here in Las Vegas, Nevada. This can be a wonderful process of discovery, not just as a church family, but individually as that living stone, knowing, feeling your place, what you can do as a member of the church. Church planting is where I began to serve, started at ground zero with just that cornerstone, Christ, who spiritually led and truth be told, laid that stone, nothing much else. Can't really find a formula in a book uh, how to plant and grow a community. You need to come together and share. In a dining room of a friend's house, at least 20 or so former congregants of Pastor Dawson's first church gathered to start, in start the conversation in February 2012. 
and building a whole new church. By the time of Easter Sunday, a new congregation called the Gathering for Christ was born in the basement of a meeting room of the Courtyard Marriott Hotel in Lombard, Illinois. Humble beginnings. I don't know how many people know Willow Creek Church. Willow Creek uh, is now a famous non-denominational megachurch that had its humble beginnings in a movie theater. After the popcorn and the movie was over, they just start talking about Jesus and saying, well, what can we do? No matter where you are on your faith journey, God opens your eyes to what he is calling you to, to do through his gospel. Finding the way, truth, and the life of Jesus is not an easy road. And it can't be found without him. It can't be found as well alone. We need one another. As Peter says, to be a holy priesthood ready to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ, we have to stop stumbling over our will and strive to serve his will and love our neighbors. Let us pray. Gracious God, may this firmly be the mortar to our soul that you are the way, the only truth, and the life. The life we need to share the gospel, to build a firm foundation of faith within the hearts of our neighbors as we work together in vision, mission, and service. Through your most holy name, 